I hope Jeb runs. Uh, I think he would be a great president. Um, I have no clue what's on his mind. And uh, we, we'll talk when he's ready. Like father, like brother, very quietly, there is this groundswell in belief that if the Republicans really want to make noise come 2016, they will turn to a name that is either honored or reviled in political circles. Add to this discourse a speaker of the House who may be somewhat delusional and the man who may become the nation's next top cop. It's all here. Let's welcome to Midpoint, former U.S. Senator from Florida, now chairman of the Gunster Law Firm, also head of the Lemieux Center for Public Policy at Palm Beach Atlantic University. George Lemieux joins us here in studio. Senator, thank you so much for coming in. It's great to be with you, Ed. Here we go. Jeb Bush would love to hear the name out there. George Bush says, well, my brother thinks he wants to run and he wants to push him to run. Is Jeb Bush the right guy at the right time? I think he's absolutely the right guy at the right time. He has big ideas. He's one of the leaders in the Republican Party on thought and ideas for the future. Him and Paul Ryan, I would say, are really sort of have a, a corner on that market. And what's also nice about Jeb is he's been a governor. We don't need more legislators running the country. We've seen that with uh, Barack Obama. So someone who's run a big, complex state like Florida, third largest state in the country now, passing New York in population, someone who understands the importance of a diversity uh, you know, Florida, one of the most diverse states. He'd have to campaign all over the country. He gets that. Speaks fluent Spanish. Uh, can really relate to Hispanics in this country where Republicans have not done well with Hispanics. And most importantly, uh, he's a guy who has the courage of his convictions. I've served with him, and I know that he could be a great president. So I sure hope he runs. You talk about somebody who's been a governor. Is that the biggest problem, if we were to perceive a couple of them here in the Obama administration right now, is that the man in charge did not have that sort of leadership before he came into that role in office right now. And it seems if you look at ISIS, Ebola, Obamacare, so many different things, that would have been better served had somebody known how the government works from a leadership role. We hate career politicians sometimes. Everybody rails against them. But sometimes you have to understand how the system works in order to better it. Absolutely. And having a big state experience, being a two-term governor of a state like Florida that is potentially the most diverse state in the country. We're really, in a lot of ways, five states pushed into one, in my view. Uh, a, a large state, complex issues. He's had to deal with the legislature. He's had to deal with high level of scrutiny in the media. He's dealt with foreign leaders because a state like Florida has an international reputation, has gone on trade missions. And, you know, throughout his time as governor and still now, he's a thought leader. He's been the number one proponent of reforming education in this country. I think someone like that has a lot better skill set than someone who's never served in an executive position. But how is he going to get past the fact that his last name is Bush? I understand as Republicans, they still want to go for a Bush. However, in many circles, it's still, we actually talked about this earlier on the show, somebody blaming the Bush-Cheney war. It keeps coming back to that. He's got to overcome that because you still have to get the people in the middle, don't you? You do, but I don't really think it's a liability. I think those of us in politics may think it's a liability. You know, but we're a country that had Rocky Five, right? Like, we like the <laughs> return of, uh, of things that we know. And the Bush brand is very strong. His father is uh, now, in hindsight, thought to have been a great president. And I really also don't think it's going to matter because there's going to be a Clinton on the other side. So in some ways, you get a pass, I think, on the legacy issue or trying to promote a fresh face, for example, because most likely it's going to be Hillary Clinton on the other side of the election. You said most likely, however. Wait a minute. The first time it sounded like you were sure that, that, that in your opinion, you Well, you, you never right say never. We, would, we were sure last time, right? And then here comes this guy, <laughs> Barack Obama, who the greatest you know, electoral feat of his career was beating Hillary Clinton in that Democratic primary. So, you know, assuming her health stays good, assuming there's no miracle candidate on the left, I believe the Democrats are moving to the left. So there's a lot of cry for someone who's more, believe it or not, liberal than Hillary Clinton to run in that race. But I think Hillary Clinton, you know, probably 80, 90 percent is the nominee for the Democratic Party. And if that's the case, Jeb Bush on the other side, I think it's a wash in terms of the legacy and the, the family issue. I got a minute left. We'll take a break, come back, and we got more to do here. However, Jeb Bush seems to want to move the Republicans back towards the center. Yet there is a consideration out there that many Republicans want to go farther to the right. At least that's what we hear. What's the truth, and does he need to, and can he bring the Republicans, should he maybe is a better question, back a little bit more towards center? Well, what's amazing about this is that when Jeb Bush ran in 1994 in Florida, his first time running for governor, he was described as being right of Attila the Hun as a conservative. <laughs> and now for some to say that he's not conservative enough, uh, look, he's he's got big ideas and he understands how to make, I believe, America great again. And some of those things are education and immigration, topics that Republicans have not wanted to talk about, topics that we've ceded to the Democrats. And I think 
Governor Bush understands how complex this country is, the, the inflow of Hispanics and folks from all around the world here, and he would have a message if he ran that would be inclusive. And I really think he'd be in many ways like a Ronald Reagan, that he would push us to aspire for big dreams. Right now, we as Republicans don't have a lot of people talking about where we're going. We're just criticizing the left. I think he'd do a good job of giving us a vision. Stay right here. We're going to come right back after the break, the midterms and the Eric Holder replacement, when we continue right here on Midpoint, where we question everything.